right guys here I'm showing you just exactly how detailed this ICM Admiral Cabriolet kit is here we have just about all of the engine components now if you've been watching the build you've already seen that I've got the engine block and transmission painted did a little bit of weathering on it detailed out and here are the rest of the components that are going on this engine. This is every accessory. Here we have everything from the distributor housing, distributor cap, actually two separate parts. You have a fuel pump here, at least I think it's a fuel pump. You have one, two, three hoses. You have your timing cover. You have your belt assembly, your intake, your exhaust. This, I think, is your air filter housing. This is your starter, your generator, your carburetor. I think I've gone over everything that I can recognize and a few components that I can't. Don't know what that is. Um, this is is really some amazing detail. I've never had an engine with this many separate parts apart from the engine block which in itself is four pieces the two halves of the engine block and transmission the valve cover the oil pan and then our final portion which is our engine fan now, if you'll notice, the unique way that ICM has these delicate pieces molded into the trees. It's really interesting. Which will make it even more interesting cutting them out. But here we have this two-piece steering wheel. And here we have the engine fan. Now, this does make a much more rigid way of keeping these things in the trees it also makes it interesting uh, cutting them out which I'm about to do right now <music> now, what I recommend you do is get yourself a, piece, a couple pieces of tape to hold all of these parts down because it'll be very easy to lose these tiny little pieces as you can see by the size of my finger these pieces are very small and you could easily lose them to the carpet monster <coughs> I haven't fed mine in a while so I'm sure it's hungry piece to our engine. This brings our total number of engine parts to 21. Now I don't know about you guys but this it happens to be the most parts I have ever had to put together when building one of these engines. If you guys know of a kit that brought an engine with more parts than this uh, let me know I'd be interested to find out in 124 scale which this car is. So now it's just going to come a point of painting each individual, painting and detailing each individual part uh, to the best of my knowledge of what they're supposed to look like. So we have to do a little more research and uh, then we'll be back with some paint and detail work. Now we're back at the paint booth and we're going to start by adding some primer. I only use, or at least up to now, I've only used the Tamiya fine gray primer as it's fantastic and levels out smoothly it is great and i recommend it 100 percent
Okay, now we're going to add a little bit of color to the mix. We're going to start by spraying all of the smaller parts with the Tamiya Semi-Gloss Black. Again, the Tamiya paints spray fantastically and cover nicely and level out smoothly. Now the belt drive assembly, we're going to start out with just a coating of Tamiya Flat Black and the rest will be added by brush painting in the details later. Now after giving the carburetor a coating of uh, glass black and then we are going to go and give it a dusting of the owl clad pale gold just to give it that goldish color along with leaving the black highlights and all the recesses to give it more of a weathered look. Now I'm spraying a little bit of pale gold from Alclad to simulate the banjo fitting at the end of this coolant line. The rubber part of the line under the masking tape is painted with Tamiya rubber black for a true rubber like appearance. After painting the exhaust manifolds with a gloss black, I'm now using the all clad pale burnt metal to give them a heat discolored look. Now the carburetor we had previously painted with the gloss black and then use the owl clad pale burnt metal. We are now giving a light dusting of pale gold just to highlight the gold tones of the carburetor itself. We're only giving a light dusting in some of the larger areas to show, give it much more of a metallic look and show areas where the carburetor will have a little more shine to it than other areas. Just varying the gold tones of the carburetor itself for a more realistic appearance. I did this by very, very lightly applying color. When I use the airbrush, it's more air than paint, which will more times than not lead to a dry tip, in which case then you just have to spray more paint through to moisten the tip to allow the paint to flow better. But as the air passes through, you gen uh, gently apply just a small amount of paint because you just want to highlight the color. You don't want to repaint the entire thing. As that brings the gold tones out and gives you the varying shades that you need. finished result with the varying shades of gold to simulate the wear and use of the carburetor. Now we're going to add the heat stained look to the exhaust manifold. We have previously painted it with gloss black and then gone over it with the all clad pale burnt metal. Now once all that's dried out what we're going to do is we're going to apply a light dusting of Tamiya Clear Blue to simulate the heat discoloration of the metal on the manifold. Mostly it happens where the air, where the manifold bends as that's where heat accumulates and will start to change the color of the metal. exhaust manifold. Now it's time to make the boots for our spark plug wires. I start with taking heat shrink tubing and cutting the boots to the specific length that I need for this engine. Now I'm just kind of winging it here as I'm not really that familiar with this engine 
but from the photos I've seen, I think that this should just about suffice. We're talking only a couple of millimeters long, and these will serve as the boots that will slide over the wires that we'll be using for our spark plug wires. Now, this particular heat shrink tubing came from a distributor kit, which I purchased at the hobby shop. But it's just a standard heat shrink tubing that you can pick up at any home supply store or electronics store or online. And you're going to take it, you're going to cut it to what the lever length you need, making sure that you get them as equal as possible. Because you don't want one boot to look a lot longer than the other. As here, you can see that the lower boot is just a little bit longer than the rest. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of trimming on that one to try and equal them out as it's very important for appearances that the boots all appear to be the same size. All the varying diameters of heat shrink tubing available make this uh, very easy to pick for virtually any scale of vehicle, which is one of the great things about it. This is my first time actually trying this, but I think I am going to make it a habit of doing this on every engine that I build from here on out. It's, it's a really fun process. particular kit had a particularly well-defined distributor cap which was so well-defined in fact that all I had to do was slide the boots over the terminals on a distributor cap and then I was all ready and set up for my wires as the boots fit snugly over the cap terminals just like they would on a real one just another credit to how well this kit is engineered Now to make the terminal for the coil wire. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill out the center of the distributor cap as this one did not have a coil wire, which is pretty much the only thing it was missing. And then I'm going to run my spark plug wire through the hole, install a boot over the wire and just slide it down till it hits the distributor cap surface. And there we have our end entire setup for our spark plug wires. And here we have our finished product distributor with all spark plug boots installed and ready for the ignition module wire in the center. The boots are made from heat shrink tubing. The smallest diameter I could find, not really sure what size it was, but it just seemed to fit perfectly for my needs. Now it's time to cut the boot for the center wire, which goes to the ignition coil. Now, as I described previously, I slide the boot over the wire, insert the wire, into the distributor through the hole I drilled to the center and then I just pull down on the wire until the boot meets the surface of the distributor and there we have our center coil wire with boot installed neatly into the distributor. Alright, now it's all starting to come together. We're going to start to assemble the distributor. This is a two-piece distributor which comes with the cap, which we installed all the boots on, and the distributor body itself. 
along with a vacuum vacuum actuator that's molded to the body. So we're going to use a little bit of super glue, put those together, and then get ready to add our wires. And here we have our fully assembled distributor and boots and coil wire already installed. Here I've already measured and cut out all of the wires I'll be using for my spark plug wires. My spark plug wires are made from Tamiya spark plug wires. They sell scale wiring in several diameters for different scales of vehicles. Now to install the wires, all I do is insert them into the boots as it is a very tight snug fit and it holds the wires down exactly where they should be. At this point, I'll just be inserting the wires one by one until I get them all on the distributor and then we'll get it ready for mounting to the engine. And here we have our completed distributor with all wiring. All right, now we're installing the front cover. Found that this peg here is just a little too long and won't allow the front cover to sit totally flush with the uh, engine block. So we're gonna have to just give that a little trim. And let's see if we can just snip off a little bit of it without removing all of it so that we still have our There we go. And now we still have our much better. That is perfect right there. And here you can see that snipping off that little bit of the mounting pin gives you a perfect flush fit of the front cover of the engine. Now it's time to mount the fuel pump to the side of the block. Again, the pin that you're supposed to insert into the block to mount the fuel pump is just a little bit larger than it should be in order to sit the fuel pump fully into the block. So this again is going to require a little bit of trimming in order to get it to sit flush. These are the minor fit issues that I've run into so far with this kit. It's nothing that uh, takes away from the kit itself. Just some slight modifications that need to be made. Now I'm just going to shave off just a tiny little bit off of the mounting pin for the fuel pump. And it should fit right into the engine block and make gluing it in a whole lot easier than it did before. You may notice the fuel pump is a little brighter than the other metallic shades as that's done with Model Masters Brass, which is a beautiful metallic shade and really brings out the shapes of the fuel pump and all its related engraved parts. Now that we got all that figured out, I found that it was easier just to install the boots onto the engine block itself as the engine block actually had small spark plugs molded into it and I could just slide the boot onto the plugs and have them sit there waiting for me to install the wires. And here we have the boots on all six cylinders on other spark plugs on the engine. Looks pretty good if I do say so myself. Very realistic. Okay, so we have our distributor all wired up. We have our boots inserted into the engine. Now, as far as installing the distributor into the block, it's a little bit tricky as, I don't know if you guys can make this out here, right on the bottom shaft of the distributor is a slightly angled pin that has to enter the engine here. 
And if you can see that, that's at an angle. That's not a straight entry. So basically, you're just going to have to get that pin, which is a very small... Let me see if I can show you this angle before I put it in there. That's the angle that you have to hit when you're installing the distributor into the engine. As there, the shaft sits flush against the block. Tricky, but not impossible to do. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how I can w w put these wires through into the spark plug boots. All right, so now we have our distributor attached to the block and I'm taking my pair of trusty tweezers and working the wires into each boot individually. So let's do a little high speed because I don't want to bore you guys watching me put these little wires in one by one after I cut them to size. Cue the music. <laughs> spark plug boots on the distributor and on the block my first time doing this and not horrible I wish I could get the wires to droop a little bit more so I'll be working on that so that they don't look like they're floating in the air and maybe add some uh, spark plug wire retainers. All right, here we have everything except the coil installed. This really is a really nice build. Yeah, there are some parts that are a little tricky, but Overall, really makes a nice looking piece. Here we see we have our fuel pump installed, our what I'm assuming is our oil filter assembly installed. Did take a little liberty with the colors because I don't know what they are. So I took put in there what I thought looked correct to me. And I like it. All right, we'll keep going. I'm gonna start installing our hoses now. There are a total of three hoses that go on in front of the engine. We're gonna start with the upper hose and work our way down as the other two hoses are connected together. And this one is the only one that sits separate from the rest. All right, guys, just a little note on these coolant hoses. It's not very clear in the instructions. This hose here with this fitting on the end has a notch on the back there. You see that there? That little notch on the back, not the hole, but the notch on the back. Now, the end of this hose is supposed to be glued into that notch with the holes facing forward like this which I assume is supposed to go into the radiator if you line it all up right so just be aware of that Okay, I had to switch to my gel, more gel-like super glue as now put the accelerator on there. And there's nothing I did held these holders on right. No, I just hope that they're in the right position, which I won't know until I start assembling this whole thing. 
but it looks like what the instructions are telling me to do. Tricky little bugger this it was. Give it a second to set up and then we'll attach it to the engine. All right, guys, we're putting together more of the engine. Uh, just got another little assembly tip for you. When you're putting together the alt, the generator, it wants you to glue it into this small little slot right here. Now, nothing really holds it in. It just kind of has to sit there till the glue sets. So what I found is going to make life a lot easier is install the belts first, as it'll give you two attachment points, which is the slot here on the block and the pulley for the generator itself, which will help to hold it in place as your glue sets, make your life a little easier. Here we have the engine bolts are on. So we're gonna attach that now, the generator now. And now, instead of juggling and fighting this thing for while you just insert the tab for the pulley and drop the generator into its slot there and you are pretty much done easier than just trying to juggle that generator and hopefully hopefully it falls into the right position now we have our generator installed And now we'll keep going. Let's do our starter next. On the starter, you see here one side is rounded and the other flat. Basically, you gotta make sure you put the starter in, in the right position with the rounded edge heading inboard toward the engine. Alright, this is not exactly going according to plan. <laughs> but then again. How many times has that happened? All right, give me a second, guys, while I figure this out. Sort of sorted out, mostly. Did figure out what the problem was, is that the flange at the end of the starter is just a little too big for the notch it's supposed to go into. So it won't sit exactly straight. I got it more or less where I wanted it, but uh, you guys are doing this, you may want to just file that down a little bit to make it fit a little closer. Kind of like what I did with the front cover the front timing cover but looks good I think we're uh, in and good to go there all right now we're gonna do the exhaust manifold Now that fit perfectly from the first shot. Alright, now here we go with the intake manifold. It's basically a rinse and repeat of the exhaust manifold. Just do a little test fit here first. Really nice looking piece now. All right, in the process of making fuel lines, which is basically a hit or miss kind of thing. You just trial and error, make it fit. And hopefully it all works out. As I've got to bring the fuel line from the fuel pump here, because I have to wrap around the engine, come up this way, and into the carburetor here. Now I'm using my pin vise to drill a hole in the carburetor large enough to insert the wire that I use for the tubing. Now this wire is basically jeweler's wire which you can find at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or any craft store. And then I will use jewelry beads as the fittings at the end of the wire. 
I know it sounds a little hinky, a little funny to be using this stuff, but it all kind of works in the end. As the wire, depending on the gauge, really looks like it's in scale and really fits. I am going to be making a return line also, which will be a slightly smaller gauge wire, which follows the contours of the main uh, line there, similar to the real engine from what I've seen in photographs. Now let's take a look at the fuel line that I've bent out of my wiring and uh, get ready to, to install it into the engine. All right, since I had a little issue with my camera again, such as the battery dying, we're going to be telling the rest of this story with a few photographs. Here you can see the fuel line as it enters the fuel pump itself. I had to drill a small hole in the fuel pump, insert the line, and then attach the bead to make the fitting. Now we're at the carburetor where you can see I did the same thing here, drilled a small hole, inserted the wire, added the bead for the fitting, and you can see where the wire wraps around the cylinder head and down toward the pump. This required quite a bit of bending and test fitting. As the wire had to wrap all the way around the cylinder head and then down the block back to the pump itself. Here you can also see the return line, which is the small black line underneath the main fuel line. Now the next thing I planned on doing was to make a heat shield that covers the intake gap manifold as I've seen on some of the reference photos. For this I used leftover scrap material from these small foldable metal model kits that are out there. This is one example of them. The metal earth kits, they're flat sheets of metal, usually like photo etch material. After I make one, I usually keep the extra material because I found that it's really handy for making all sorts of little odds and ends for model kits, such as the intake manifold gaskets. Sorry, I meant the intake manifold heat shield, which is placed right underneath the carburetor covering the intake manifold, as I've seen in the, as I mentioned before, in reference photos. This is what I was trying to replicate, as this is one of the photos that I found of a similar engine. While it's not exactly the same engine, it is from the same engine family, and it was a neat little detail which I thought would be fun to replicate on this project. So I got the cutting and bending, and this is the first prototype that I came up with of my heat shield. Once I got the general shape down, I went back, made my final product, and then got a little painting on it. And now here it is installed on the engine. You can see it with the heat stained effects. And it looks really nice, I think. I use the same painting technique here that I did on the exhaust manifolds. All right, guys, so now after all of that work, here is the final result. This is the engine of the Opel Admiral Cabriolet from ICM. The engine in itself is a fantastic piece, really deserving to be a model kit all on its own. And I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out. Uh, despite a few minor fitment issues, which were easy to overcome, which is part of the challenge and fun of modeling. It's uh, just a really, really nice piece to look at. I may add a few more details here and there as I go along and I get ready to install it in the car. But for now, I think this is going to be the gist of what it is. As I said, I'm really happy with the way it came out. Just based on this engine alone, I am raving about this kit. I can't wait to go further with it as the next few steps should be even more interesting as we start to assemble the body and the interior now that the chassis is done. So uh, I'm going to leave you here with just a little bit of video here of this and uh, a few beauty shots. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know this video was a little long, but uh, I think it was worth it as a step-by-step -step of how I put this thing together. Oh, wait, guys, I forgot to tell you about the last modification I made. The ignition coil which mounts to the block. It was missing one small detail, which is a terminal that I could have put the boot on in order to apply the wire. So what I did was I drilled a small hole in it, inserted a small steel rod, 
And that became my terminal to which I attached the boot and then the wire. And then we had a correct coil which was mounted to the engine. I think it was worth the extra little touch to get that done. As now we have a fully wired ignition system in this car. The coil is the green object which is hanging up on the side of the engine there. So that's the last little detail we have. I'm going to leave you with some beauty shots of some of the details. Let me know in the comments what you think. How did it turn out? I'm very happy with it. And uh, I hope you guys like it.